Hey, future respiratory therapists. We're gonna talk now about respiratory alkalosis when it comes to ABG interpretation. You need to understand that respiratory alkalosis is just important as recognizing respiratory acidosis. I did a video on respiratory acidosis, recognizing it, know how to qualify it, uh, know what to call it, know when it's compensating, when it's not, know when it's acute, know when it's chronic. I did that and, and now I'm gonna do the exact opposite which is respiratory alkalosis, okay? So again, we have our normals up here on the board. pH 7.40, we know the normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. PaCO2 is 40, we know the range is 35 to 45. Bicarb 24, we know the range is 22 to 26. Text will vary. I don't care. I'm using 22 to 26, normal being 24 for the purpose of this video, okay? Now, respiratory alkalosis is any state or disease state that will cause a loss of acid and it will push the pH up, okay? So, so we're talking we're not talking about acidosis now remember acidosis is anything when the ph is less than 7.35 now we're talking about ph being greater than 7.45 and why would it be greater than 7.45 well if you're talking about respiratory alkalosis then you're going to talk about conditions that will cause arterial co2 to go down that will push the pH up. Remember, carbon dioxide pushes pH in the opposite direction. So, let's look at this. If your CO2 goes down, let's just say to 30, okay, and your bicarb stays the same at 24, then your pH is going to do what? It's gonna go up, right? So, we're gonna go 7.50. Okay, again, Henderson Hasselbach me, I don't care. It may not be 7.50, but it's gonna be close. Okay, so, so just for the sake of this video, just go with me. CO2 goes down, pH goes up, okay? Now, we're gonna call this blood gas right here an uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. Why? It's uncompensated because the pH is out of range on the high side and the bicarb has not moved out of normal range. You've got to understand this. If bicarb is within the normal range on any respiratory abnormality, then it's going to be an uncompensated blood gas. Okay? Bicarb is the compensatory mechanism for respiratory disturbances. And in this case, your CO2 has gone down, your pH has gone up, and that's because your bicarb has stayed the same. So this is uncompensated. This could also be called, in, in the advanced ABG interpretation world, this could also be called an acute alveolar hyperventilation. Now that's a lot of words, right? But if you think about it, acute means uncompensated and if a patient alveolar hyperventilates then co2 will go down okay so this is the blood gas that you will see most commonly with most diseases in the early stages so if a patient comes to the emergency room before it's too late you will oftentimes catch them and an uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, also known as acute alveolar hyperventilation. Why? Because they're sick and they're hyperventilating, trying to get O2 in and CO2 out. Okay? Now, as this process begins to compensate, you will see the bicarb go down. Now, why will the bicarb go down? Well, it goes down because, remember, bicarb pulls pH back into, pulls, pulls pH in the same direction, okay? So, as your CO2 stays at 30, your bicarb will begin to go down 
as bicarb goes down, what does it do to pH? Remember I told you in my previous video, bicarb pulls pH in the same direction. So your bicarb pulls your pH back down. Now notice that it's still not in normal range yet, yet your bicarb has dropped below the normal range of 22 to 26. That's because we'll call this a compensating or a partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. So I'm going to write that right here, okay? So this is partially compensated respiratory alkalosis, okay? It's partially compensated because the bicarb is moved but the pH is not yet fully compensated back into normal range, okay? Now from here, the bicarb will continue to drop, and as it continues to drop, it will continue to bring the pH back down. So from here, CO2 stays at 30, bicarb goes to 18, pH comes to 7.44, and what do we have now? Now we have a fully compensated, because pH is back in the normal range, respiratory alkalosis compensated by a drop in bicarb. So this would be a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis. Remember, bicarb will always move down when your patient is hyperventilating, this will bring your pH back in to normal range. So there we have it, guys. Acute alveolar hyperventilation, known, also known as uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, where your patient is hyperventilating, common in early stages of just about every disease process, okay? Partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. And then what you will rarely see is a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis. And if you see this, it's probably going to be associated with a head injury patient who is chronically hyperventilating. Okay? So if this doesn't make sense, leave me comments. Let me know what you need me to elaborate on. I'll be glad to clarify it for you. Be sure to look for my next video titled Advanced ABG Interpretations where we expand on the alveolar hyperventilation. Good luck, guys.